What is good, dudes? Lady dudes, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Uh, we had the full set list for Dual Power pretty much right on time, uh, literally a week before uh, the day the set is set to release, and it's pretty crazy. Uh, I'll be honest, when I heard the the you know reveal for this set, and they said immediately the day they were, they announced it, they announced that like all the Ghost Girls were going to be there, like in permanence, evenly matched, Bora load, all that good stuff, and like the um, Link Vrain stuff, like all that stuff was like announced. Um, and I was like, okay, like, that's awesome. Like, it's awesome that we're getting these things, some of the things we didn't have, reprints that we should have. Um, but I was like, I also was skeptical because I was like, but that, let's be honest, that's probably the, the best of the set. Like, the rest of the set is probably not going to be as good. And I'll say the rest of the set isn't that good, at that good, as good as that stuff, you know, hand traps and permanents evenly. <coughs> Card demise, link brain stuff. That's probably the best stuff. But this set is still insane. This set has crazy stuff, and it's going to take us a while to go through it because it is a 100-card set, but we got time. We're going to go through it. Um, we'll start with the first 40 cards here, everything right here, uh, just because these are the brand new cards because the set was 40 brand new cards, 60 reprints. Uh, so let's start with the brand new cards. So we have a lot of stuff that, like, we already kind of could guess, like Magician of Chaos, Dark Cavalry, Draw of Fate. A lot of these, a lot of stuff is like legacy support that we never got officially in the TCG. So, like a bunch of legacy support. I won't spend too much time about that. Like Grand Merge, Double Hero Attack, Signal Warrior, Stardust Wish, Utopia Double, Onomatopoeia. Utopia Double could actually have see some use in anything that makes rank fours using like um, uh, Utopia and Utopia the Lightning. Like Utopia Double could be something interesting there, but it's still cheese. Um, Onomatopoeia, Shining Draw, uh, Odd Eyes Advance, Smile Sorcerer, Soul Pendulum, Cyrus Enchanter, Backup Supervisor, Decode Destruction, Bond Between Teacher and Student, Dark Magic Twin Burst, Magic Gate of Miracles, and then we get to the more interesting stuff. So that's like most, almost all the legacy support we saw, uh, we see, um, that's brand new. Um, nothing too influential, I don't think none of, even it, any of it's like, I don't even know if it's stuff you'd play like in Dark Magician or in... Uh, you know, Utopia rank four deck or whatever, odd eyes, all that stuff. Um, I don't think any of them are that good. But we get to the more interesting stuff. So some of the stuff that we did not know, we have Double Bite Dragon in this set. And I don't think Double Bite Dragon is like insane, but it is an interesting card. If you don't know what it does, it's pretty much a link two. Um, it takes two link monsters specifically. Um, it has 1500 attack, it gains 300 attack times the link rating of the monsters you use. So it's going to be at least 2100, a link to is 2100, that's pretty high. And then also it says stuff like, um, it can't be destroyed, or it's like unaffected by monster effects except for link monster effects, and it also can't be destroyed by battle except for link monsters. Um, so depending on the deck, that could just straight up be a huge problem. Um, so I just think he's an interesting card. It's a link too. It's nothing crazy, but I did think he was interesting, and I've had my eye on him for a while. That if you do play a deck that plays like Scapegoat, or you can span the board and use make use of the Link Karibo and Link Spider or whatever, um, you can make him pretty easy, and he can actually be actually a problem. Just a beat stick that's hard to get off the board for decks that don't like all the time go into Link monsters. Um, then we see Trickstar, Foxglove Witch, and Trickstar Magical Laurel. These are actually interesting cards. I don't think they're amazing, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see some list top with like uh, Fox, uh, Foxglove Witch and Laurel, maybe just as, as one ofs in the deck, but still, they have some use. They're not terrible cards. I think they are actually usable. Um, Goki Jet Ogre and Goki Cage, Goki Cage match. I don't see that these really getting too much use. Maybe Jet Ogre is a stepping stone, but Isol just like pluses you too. So why would you go into Jet Ogre when you could go into Isol and plus two? Um, Booster Dragon is actually interesting because that is we do have the Revolver structure deck coming out um, in the next upcoming months, and uh, Booster Dragon could be an integral part. Uh, being an, actually one of the better Link 2s that the deck uses to get your plays going, so that's interesting. Tactical Exchanger, um, that's another like a Boral card, and it's like a trap card, but it's like a trap uh, like engine card, which is never good unless it's insanely powerful and it's only okay in power. 
Um, then we get to some really cool um, Link Vrain stuff. We see Hieratic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres. That's almost immediately going to be played in Guard Dragons. We will definitely see lists with this being played and possibly being an integral piece of Guard Dragons. Uh, Crowley, the per uh, first Prophesier. Cool for, for decks that play um, Prophecy slash uh, spell books, but I don't think it'll have too much use outside of those decks. Aroma Seraphy Jasmine. We'll see if this deck can cause any uh, plant decks to really spike in usage, but we'll see. Um, and then Thunder Dragon Storm, Thunder Storm Ek. Card's terrible. We're not going to see it played at all. This is cheesy one of in a Thunder Dragon deck. Um, Nine Tailed Fox is a card I saw a while ago. It's like a zombie that brings itself back, but you got to like destroy two zombies you control or something. It's just not worth it. Doesn't like plus you at all. Uh, just puts like a, a big booty on field. Um, two cards that are really interesting is Righty and Lefty Driver. I saw these cards a while ago when I was looking at like OCG deck lists and stuff. Um, when we were seeing like a lot of just those random link spam decks, Lighty, Righty and Lefty Driver were all over those. Um, they're kind of they kind of remind me of um, the White Dragon Wyver Buster Burster, and then uh, the Black Dragon Collapse Serpent that we see being played in like Guard Dragon and thunder dragons um right now they're kind of like that but they're little earth machines one's a level one tuner and one can like one on normal summon can just special the other one straight from deck and one the turn it's not sent to graveyard can like banish itself or whatever to to i think add the other one to hand so it's like an engine that just keeps like rotating it's like platinum gadget silver gadget and then the, the two dragons so they're pretty cool um, Photon Advancer is interesting because Photons have always had, had like powerful cards, but they didn't have like consistency or enough extenders. And this card's a nice extender for the deck to let you play around certain hand traps and stuff, which is cool. Um, Predator Plant Spider Orchid. Um, card's okay, it just searches, but the deck is really slow, so it's like a slower search. <laughs> Cyber Dragon Nashter. This card could push Cyber Dragons to the next level, making it um, a little more viable. Um, card's pretty crazy. Special summon Cyber Dragons from the graveyard. Uh, Security Dragon is really cool, especially for those decks that can just spam the board and, and use. I think it'd be played in like maybe Orcus because they go into Mermaid all the time. You could just co link this under Mermaid to bounce something. So it's just a free bounce if you have it co linked, which is pretty cool. Um, we have Beat Cop from the Underworld. Not a lot of uses you'll see out of this card. It's mostly just for Lair of Darkness it has value in, which is a deck I play, so I'm actually interested in this card, but I don't think many other people will be. Um, just doesn't do enough. Um, Platinum Gadget is Platinum Gadget. It's actually a decent um, just machine link monster in general. I believe its, its effects generically support machines and not specifically gadgets, which is pretty cool. Um, and then Quintet Magician is actually an, another legacy card. I don't know why it's all the way down here, but it's like a, it's like a spellcaster slash uh, dark magician support card. So that's pretty cool there. Then we actually move to the reprints, and this is where things actually get crazy because a lot of these, a lot of the newer cards are just kind of like cards that we knew we were getting at some point, and I'm okay that the, that we get them here. A lot of them are legacy support, so they make sense. We get a uh, what four. Yeah, four um, Link Vrains cards, so that's awesome. Just start banging those out. Um, I'm totally down for that. Three more Link Vrains Pack 1, which I think only leaves two from Link Vrains Pack 1. Anyway, um, I could go through this whole list, which would take so long, but a lot of stuff is really good. Toon Dark Magician Girl, um, they're all commons except for one printing. Um, and the one printing that's like not a common is like actually like over ten dollars. So really nice silver and gold gadget, whatever. It's just nice. They're not that expensive, but they're like over a dollar or whatever. Harpy Dancer is an eight dollar card because it only has one printing. So this is nice. Hopefully that can deflate that price a little bit. Um, Sphere mode of uh, a semi used card in a lot of side decks nowadays, just because of um, Cyber Dragons or not Cyber Dragons, Thunder Dragons and like uh, Guard Dragons. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Wind Dragon of Raw Immortal Phoenix. I believe only had one printing, so it was like 14 15 bucks. So, this is really awesome. Divine Serpent Ge is actually a bad print. I will say right now, this is actually like a bad reprint. Um, but there's not many. We look at Chaos Max. This has three printings, but it's still like four dollars minimum for the cheapest one, so that's not bad. Chaos Form, kind of the same boat. 
Um, Card of Demise, we already knew this was a great reprint. It's been like 15 to 20 bucks for like a while. Uh, Dark Magical Circle and Eternal Soul. These make sense because this is like a legacy support set with like the Dark Magician stuff. And these are like 2 to $3 cards. This isn't even that bad of reprints. Uh, that way. Uh, Vision Hero Vion. That card creeped up when, especially when like Gokis or Dark Warriors was like a big thing. Those creeped up so high and they're still like 6 bucks. So this is nice. Um, Ancient Gear Golem Ultimate Pound. Uh, isn't a crazy reprint, but... <clears throat> It does have three printings, but they're all common. So I think it's cool to give the people who love Ancient Gear, uh, or Gear, yeah, Ancient Gear, uh, as an archetype, to give them, like, a higher rarity of this card. Uh, Miracle Fusion, I didn't know this, but surprising that this card is, like, a pretty high price point. Even the common is, like, almost $2, I guess, because it's just, like, a classic hero card. Uh, so that makes it, like, pretty desirable. Uh, Mark of the Rose, not really that expensive, but I think it's over a dollar. It's a, it's a nice, like, generic plant support card, so that's, like, with the Arrow Mage Link Monster. Good addition there. And we have all three of these hot red dragon cards, um, and all three are actually really good. Uh, Abyss is the one that people are playing in Guard Dragons, I believe, and that one's, like, $30. Uh, hot Red Dragon Archfiend Bane, I think, is really I don't remember exactly where this one was, but I think King Calamity was like fifteen. They're all like pretty expensive. So these are actually all three pretty nice reprints as well. Uh, Star uh, Star Seraph Scepter and Sovereignty, which is pretty good because Sovereignty is like still like four or five bucks and Scepter is like a dollar or two, but still just a cool engine, a nice nostalgic engine that's probably more expensive than it should be versus like for like how much it's played nowadays, but still cool to see it get reprinted, get some uh, respect by Konami. Uh, Galaxy Soldier, that's a good reprint as well for Cyber Dragon players, making their um, $15 two or three of hopefully go down a little bit more. And we have Galaxy Eyes Full Armor Dragon, that's like a 6 or $7 card, nice reprint. Double or Nothing is a card that is only common, I think, so it's nice to give, like, if somebody does want to play a cheesy Utopia deck, um, it will be a higher rarity, so I don't think that's that bad. X, XZ's Change Tactics, same thing. I think this is only like a rare, um, giving it a higher rarity version, finally. Orphus Scorpio is like a 2 or $3 common, a rare, I think. And so this will probably give that those guys that like playing the, the Brilliant Fusion at 1, those ballsy guys playing in, uh, Brilliant Fusion at 1, uh, like a higher rarity Orphus Scorpio, or the hard Predaplant players. Uh, Fright for Patchwork, finally giving those guys a higher rarity for Patchwork. I mean, we knew this was kind of coming. It was going to be here at some point. Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, that's like an 8 to $10 card or something, like for both printings, because they're both like secrets. Um, Dragostopelia, another uh, common that is like a boss monster for Predaplants and uh, Instant Fusion, or not Instant Fusion, uh, Super Polymerization players, giving them a higher, a nicer looking target for that. Um, Link Disciple is actually an interesting uh, Link 1 for Cybers monsters. It just takes any one level 4 lore Cybers, I believe. So that could be useful all on its own. So Link Disciple is pretty interesting. Um, Link Karibo, another nice reprint because the Ultra Rare that was the jump promo was still pretty expensive. Um, so this can hopefully make that nicer without having to get the common from the structure deck. Um, Holly Angel is like one of the very few bad reprints in this whole set. That goes along with uh, Divine Serpent Geh. Um, Trickstar, or Goki the Great Ogre, another terrible reprint. This card's like 10 cents, and it already has like super rare printing, so like, why would you need this? Boreload, awesome. It's still like, what, 10 to 20 bucks? Um, and then we have the Hand Traps. These are just awesome. Ogre's been 10 bucks. Reaper's been like 5 bucks. Ash has been like, what, 7 or 8 bucks, even for the common, and like 15 for the super, so this is awesome to see here, just deflating the generic cards that a lot of competitive players have to play, letting those budget players still have a chance, a little more of a chance, I should say, playing uh, the more competitive cards for a lower price. Ghost Bell was already creeping down to 30, so hopefully this will drop it even lower, finally seeing this card that was like 50 or 60 for a long time. Zaborg is a good reprint as well for um, Necroz, I believe. Uh, Hieratic Dragon of Tefnuit. This card, I think, has a bunch of commons, and then, like, the super rare is, like, three bucks, so... I mean, you're getting the Hieratic Seal card, so I guess this is a reprint that's not that bad, but it's not that good. Uh, High Priestess is a really nice reprint. I know that's, like, for a deck that does not get played much, this card was really highly priced. 
Um, so it's good to see that. Same thing with Arom Aromage, Jasmine, and Rosemary. I have one copy of each, and I did not know that Jasmine was worth like, what was it? It was 15 or was it like 20? It was like really expensive, and I was like, why are you so expensive? I'm really glad, really glad to see these cards getting reprints. Sure, it, sure, it's actually not that good of a reprint. They have like a super rare version, and it's like 50 cents, so I don't know why we need this, but whatever. You're reprinting Necrozes. You might as well throw Sherrod in there. Um, and then for the actual, like, Necroz, like, uh, ritual monsters. There we go. Uh, Clausulus and Unicorn are already cheap as hell. I think they're, like, less than a dollar. But Brionac was, like, is, like, 20 bucks still. And then, like, Trishula and Valkyris are literally, like, 40 bucks. So these are really, really welcome reprints. Um... For those people who want to play those older decks, because I know a lot of people love Necroz format. That's nice to see. Uh, Construct gets a reprint here. This is nice because the the Ultra version of Construct was still like 10 bucks, so this will hopefully deflate that a little bit. The cheapest Naturia Beast is still like 9 or $10, so this is always good. Always welcome, always welcoming Naturia Beast reprints. Um, Hieratic Dragon King Atem. I don't remember. I think this card was like actually low key, like seven dollars. Still, it was like a, it only has like one printing, and it's like already an ultra. So, um, I think it's actually a pretty good reprint. Uh, Great Magnus obviously still has like some price points because it's only I think it was a secret and it only had one printing. And we also are getting hyped from the Super Quant support coming in Dark Neo Storm, which is nice. Should all construct. Um, this was like the worst uh, Link monster in Link Frames Pack One, but. It was a common, so it's nice to see it get at least some kind of print um, higher than common, because I think maybe you do still play in like a pure shit all version. So, Schwedevs. Uh Cleefor Genius was only a rare up until this point, so it's nice to see it get a uh, ultra rare here. That'll probably be somewhere around five dollars for those people, you know, who play Cyber Dragons or whatever deck uh, ABCs that still play this. Um, El Shadal Fusion. I did not think El Shadal Fusion was like $3 minimum, but it is. All three prints are, and they're like uh, super rare, so not a bad reprint there. Um, the Necroz Mirror and Necroz Kaleidoscopes, again, more uh, a solid Necroz reprints here. And then the last two cards are evenly matched and impermanence. Evenly matched even after the reprint um, last year, at the end of last year. It's still like 20 and 25 bucks, I think. Uh, so that's really nice to see and like probably the nicest reprint in the whole set is infinite permanence It's gonna be the chase card It's 90 bucks. It's been 90 to like 110 for like Six months it feels like so it'll hopefully we see that card drop I mean I'm crossing my fingers and toes and hoping below 50 I mean it's an ultra rare it was a short printed secret and now it's an ultra so hopefully even if it is short printed It'll hopefully at least be half the price of what it is now and a lot of budget players that play those kind of stun decks that want to play more traps can finally play Infinite Impermanence for a, a slightly more affordable price. I didn't really talk about the promo cards or the variant art cards because you get them in every set, but, you know, the classic Dark Magician, Neo, Stardust, Utopia, Odd Eyes, and, and Decode stuff. Like, they're just cool. All the artwork looks awesome. And, yeah, so at the end of the day, literally, I thought there were, like, four cards that were actually bad reprints. Like, sure, it... Holly Angel, Great Ogre, and Divine Serpent Get. Other than that, even the like cards that were like commons, that at least they're getting higher rarities now, which is nice. Like literally four cards were like bad, uh, which is actually really surprising. Because like I said at the beginning of the video, I was expecting this set to be like, yeah, we already got at the very beginning we got a, uh, an announcement for all the awesome like reprints and new cards we're getting, and I thought that, like the rest of the set might disappoint, but it really did not. There's really a ton of value in this set. The value of this set is going to be insane. I think a ton of this this set is going to be opened up and sell really well. Hopefully that means a lot of uh, uh, numbers of these cards flood the market and hopefully it can bring down value uh, for those budget buyers and stuff. But really awesome set. I mean, bravo, Konami. Seriously, this is an awesome set. Hopefully uh, keep it up because a lot of your products look like you're, they're doing pretty dang well so far this year but uh guys i know this is a little long and it took us a while to get through it but thank you if you stuck through me all the way here uh if you like this video go ahead and subscribe for more stuff from me in the future um i got a lot of stuff planned for the future um upcoming and yeah thanks again <laughs> peace